Have you been waiting for a horrible camera to pipe awful looking footage directly into your smartphone? Then I have the perfect product for you. Yesterday, we started to do a review of this product. I wanted it to be a legitimate review. And when we got back to the office to actually look at some of the footage compared to the GH5 and then my iPhone 10, the footage out of this camera looked so horrific that I thought maybe something was wrong with this. Maybe this was a prototype. So we ended up emailing the company and just telling them, hey, when we compare this footage to our other cameras, this, this looks horrible. You probably don't want us to review this. And they responded and said, well, you know, you shouldn't really be comparing it to the GH5. And as long as you mention its other features, we still want you to review it. So here we go. So let's quickly talk about what this is. This is the iMore S1. It's supposed to be a compact video camera. It's a micro four thirds mount. And the whole idea here is that, as you can see, there's no screen on it or anything. You're supposed to use your smartphone as the viewfinder and as the recording device. So the idea is you're gonna be recording much higher quality video with this. It's going to be directly imported onto your phone. You don't have to transfer anything. It just records directly to the phone. And then if you wanna upload instantly to the internet with a much higher quality video, you're gonna have it right there on your phone. I like the idea of this. And when you actually look at the specs that they put in the promo video, it sounds too good to be true because they say that this thing can shoot at ISO 400,000. It's showing these incredible shots of the stars and it's comparing it to the GH5. It also has autofocus. It also has incredible high dynamic range. They claim it has 14 stops of dynamic range. We're starting to get to the point where it's like cinema airy cameras at that point. So I was very excited to actually put this to the test. Here's the problem. This camera only shoots in 1080. That in itself isn't a big deal. As long as it was a nice, clean 1080, I would be very happy with that. But when you look at this footage, I have never seen a camera take such bad 1080 looking footage in my entire life. I mean, this footage is moving around. If you zoom in just the littlest bit, the grain looks insane out of this thing. There's also constantly glitches going on. I mean. There's lines through the middle of the footage. There's weird artifacts that just appear and disappear. And this is at the lowest ISO outside in complete daylight. So maybe you're saying, well, Lee, maybe it looks bad, but this camera's really made for high dynamic range. What about those 14 stops of dynamic range? So I started cycling through low, medium, and high, high dynamic range settings. And oh my gosh, it looks so bad. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I, I think if I just, took normal cell phone footage or GH5 footage and just brought up the shadows, it would look better than whatever this camera is doing. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. So for the next test, we went inside to shoot in extremely low light conditions. This is where I thought the iMore might really shine because it claims to be able to shoot in extreme low light conditions and it shows all these starscapes in their video. Uh, so I was shooting with the GH5 maxed out, 128,000 ISO, uh, F2.8, 1 25th of a second. As you can see, the iPhone couldn't even record at all. It was just too dark for the iPhone. But then in the iMore, I messed with the ISO. I messed with the high dynamic range. Look at this footage. Like what the hell is going on with this footage? If I zoom in, there's this picture in the middle of the frame. People's faces are going crazy. <laughs> I, I just, I don't understand if this is some software thing or a hardware thing. But oh my gosh, it's may, maybe this camera will become famous one day because it has a signature look. If you want your footage and your grain to dance around and move like ants all over the frame, the iMore is the way to go because I've never seen any other camera that can compete when it comes to moving grain and noise. I don't even know if I'm angry. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with like how insanely bad this camera is while at the same time being fairly impressed with the build quality of the camera. When we first got this and we got it in the case and pulled it out, it looks like a legitimate product. So I don't understand how they could build something so pretty from a physical standpoint and then have it literally not work. It's, it's just, and then there's other weird things about this camera as well. Like it doesn't have a microphone attached to it. And the app for the iPhone doesn't actually use the iPhone microphone either. So you have to plug in an external microphone if you wanna have any audio at all. The iPhone app is made to be used horizontally, but all of the text is written vertically. So it's very difficult to go through all of the menus and read what you're actually doing. Some of the menus are still in Chinese. 
And then when you actually wanna get the files off your phone, you have to go into the iMore app, choose each one one by one, switch them over to the camera roll, which takes time for every single thing. There's not an option for select all. And then you have to go into the camera roll. And if you've ever tried to get photos off your iPhone, that's an absolute nightmare. On the side, there's a little port for a micro SD card. We could never figure out how to get it to work. Maybe there is a way to actually record in camera. Keep in mind, there's no buttons on this entire thing. The other weird thing is that on the side, it says that there's Wi-Fi or that there's uh, Bluetooth. And so I thought, oh, awesome. We're gonna be able to connect to this remotely and record over the internet. We could never figure out how to get that to work either. And here's the icing on the cake for this entire thing. If you look up the Indiegogo page, it is gone. It, it doesn't exist anymore. And then if you type in iMore S1, a single YouTube video comes up and they have a link to their website. If you go to their website, the whole website doesn't even exist. So I'm not sure this product is actually ever going to come out. I think at one time it was supposed to be $1,000. But if they don't even have websites, if they don't even have the Indiegogo page up and running, it's certainly not looking good for this company. And then it's also so weird that we warned them and said, hey, you probably don't want us to review this. This footage looks horrible. And then they said, no, no, go ahead and review it. I don't know what's going on here. And, and I will be the first to admit if I'm doing something wrong or they sent me a bad unit and they're gonna send me another one, I will delete this video and I will make another one. But as it stands right now, this is one of the most horrible products I have ever reviewed. So if you are one of these poor, poor people who actually spent $1,000 on Indiegogo for this camera, I am sorry, you got ripped off. Hopefully everyone watching this will take note and will not spend any more money on these Kickstarter programs for things that probably will never pan out. And obviously they've built something here, but this is unbelievably bad. Normally, I would put something like this on eBay, but I don't think it's going to sell. So if you guys have any ideas of what we should do with this camera, please let us know in the comments below. And whoever has the best idea, that's what we're gonna do.